We will now proceed with the debate and vote on the research report, Housing Affordability in Portland. Uh, if you are a club member and did not receive a voting card when you arrived, it looks like this, it's yellow and numbered, please return to the registration table to be issued one. And if I could, if, if we could wind the conversations down, we want, we've, got, we've got more business to do here, which is action on the report. I'd like to start out by thanking our research sponsors who helped City Club perform this outstanding work. DHM Research, HDR, Oregon Health and Science University, Tonkin Torp, and Northwest Health Foundation. Please join me in showing our appreciation for them. Please note that donations to City Club, while gratefully accepted, come without regard to any funder's opinion on the content of our research, advocacy, or events, and City Club research does not represent the opinions of our partners, sponsors, and donors. This, like all City Club reports, was written by volunteer members of the club who were screened for conflicts of interest before they were appointed to serve on the study committee. The committee was charged with identifying the conditions that have led to the rapid increase in housing costs in the city of Portland and with recommending policies to increase the supply of affordable housing for low and middle income households. Club members now have the opportunity to discuss, debate, and vote to accept or reject the committee's recommendations. Jonathan Rodmacher will serve as parliamentarian and timekeeper for our debate today. Andrea Pastor, a member of the research committee, will present the report and move for adoption of the report's majority recommendations. She will be followed by Mike Westling, also a research committee member, who will present the minority report and then will move to amend the motion by substituting the minority recommendation for majority recommendation number three and related passages in the report. The meeting will then be open for debate and vote by City Club members. Now I will turn the podium over to Andrea Pastor and then Mike Westling. Hello, I'm just gonna quickly go over the recommendations one more time. Uh, number one, the Portland City Council should dedicate funding to build subsidized affordable housing units. The council should follow existing research and recommendations on revenue streams from Metro's Opportunity and Challenges for Equitable Housing report and the Welcome Home Coalition. It should consider a variety of funding alternatives such as a linkage fee, voter approved housing levy for ongoing revenue or a general obligation bond authorization for initial funding. Two, the City of Portland and the Portland Development Commission and Metro should develop a housing land bank strategy to put money away during strong economic times for, a purchase, for use in purchasing properties during downturns. Three, the City of Portland should remove barriers to and identify incentives that encourage development of more housing types. Examples could include funding the multiple unit limited tax exemption program to encourage developers to use voluntary inclusionary zoning and streamlining the design review process. Four, the Oregon legislature should end the ban on local rent regulation uh, and allow Portland and other local governments to engage with all stakeholders to consider policies within a spectrum that include rent stabilization and rent control. Five, the city of Portland should ban no cause evictions and enact a just cause eviction policy. Six, the city of Portland should implement a rental property licensing system to allow for data collection, increased inspections, and education. I move to adopt the, uh, the report with the majority recommendations. Is there a second? Seconded. <laughs> and now Mike Westling will present the minority report. Thanks, Andrea. Um, to begin, I just want to reiterate that the research committee universally agreed that housing affordability is a systemic challenge that's going to require multiple solutions and swift action. So in short, we all agreed that we need more tools in the toolkit. The one tool that split the group and spurred the minority report was the revision of Portland zoning code um, and the zoning map to allow for more missing middle housing types in the city's residential neighborhoods. Things like duplexes, triplexes, townhomes, small apartments and garden apartments. Missing middle housing also includes ancillary dwelling units or ADUs, 
cottage clusters, and internal conversions of older homes into multiple uses. Um, these are residential units that fill the gap between single family homes and large multifamily apartment buildings, but are not allowed in most of Portland under current zoning. The majority acknowledge the value of middle housing to address housing affordability, but stop short of recommending changes to the city's zoning code to encourage their development. In response, the minority report specifically calls upon Portland City Council to update the zoning code, and just as importantly, the zoning map to allow for a wider variety of housing options not just on corner lots, but sprinkled throughout our residential neighborhoods. In many ways, proximity has become the equivalent of opportunity in our city. The closer you are to good schools, to active parks, and well-paying jobs, the greater your chances for success. As such, the discussion about housing affordability can't just be about how much housing we have, but also where that housing is located. Recent research shows that kids from poor families who live in mixed income neighborhoods do better in school and earn more money over their lifetimes than kids who live in neighborhoods of concentrated poverty. At the same time, kids from affluent families acquire social and emotional skills like curiosity, collaboration, and empathy that help them succeed later in life. The benefits extend to the entire region, allowing a diversity of housing types in our neighborhoods will promote affordability, make our community uh, more walkable, and reduce carbon emissions. And by reducing the need for people to commute long distances from places where housing costs less, mixed income neighborhoods can reduce traffic congestion and improve movement of freight throughout the region. And the best part of uh, revising the zoning code is that unlike the vast majority of other, other affordable housing solutions, it doesn't cost a dime. If our goal is to preserve our neighborhoods exactly as they are for years to come, we can choose to do that. But we'll also have to accept the fact that these neighborhoods will continue to become more and more expensive and that large numbers of Portlanders won't be able to afford to live there. Portland's residential zoning code was not brought down on stone tablets from Mount Tabor. <laughs> it can and should be revised and improved to reflect the type of city we have become and the type of city we want to be. The biggest question about any zoning code revision is, how would it change the way our neighborhoods look? The answer is, you'll really barely even notice it. Right now, a home builder can purchase the house next door to me, tear it down, build a brand new 3,000 square foot house and sell it for $600,000. But want to build a triplex with three 1,000 square foot homes and sell each for $200,000? Sorry buddy, not allowed. So how does the minority report differ from the majority report? Very little. The only change is that instead of continuing the conversation about expanding housing options in residential neighborhoods, it calls on the city council to actually take action. And the need for action is urgent, especially as the City Council considers the City's comprehensive plan update and changes to the zoning map in the coming weeks. If we are serious about addressing the affordability crisis, we can't restrict more affordable housing types from broad swaths of the City. Our amazing neighborhoods are what make Portland such a livable place. If we want to keep those neighborhoods affordable for the future, we need to take action today. And now to the business at hand. I move to substitute my, the minority recommendation for minor, majority recommendation number three and to amend related passages in the report. Thanks. We will now debate the motion to substitute the minority recommendation for majority recommendation number three and related passages in the report. The microphone to my far right is labeled majority, and the one to the far left is labeled minority. I will alternate between the two positions. Uh, each member will have one minute to speak. Our parliamentarian will enforce this time limit by flashing a 15-second warning card and indicating when time is running out, and then by ringing the bell when time is up. We have tossed a coin and will first recognize a member favoring the minority. Is there anyone to speak at the minority microphone? Oh, I'm sorry. I... Virginia Cornyn, member. Um, I do a lot of walking in Portland neighborhoods, and there are a lot more multiple units out there than people see, many of which were built during the World War II era when Portland needed a lot of people to move here and a lot of people to have affordable housing. I think that's a tradition we should continue. Now a comment from the, ma the majority. Uh, Jim Gorder, city club member. Uh, the Portlanders value their traditional neighborhoods and middle housing, particularly middle housing zoning, comes with the demolition of existing viable homes. Experience shows that 
uh, the replacement homes, even when it's a t on a two-for-one basis, are more expensive than the house that was demolished. I don't think there's any way in a market-driven society, uh, economy and society to assure that the replacement houses are going to be any more affordable than what was there in the first place. Now a comment from the minority. Mark, Gam uh, Mark Gamba, uh, City Club member and the Mayor of Milwaukee. And while I'm loath to tell my neighbors to the north how to zone their <laughs> properties, um, I, I would throw down the gauntlet and say that over the next two years, we're going to be going through our uh, comprehensive plan, thank you, and I will be pushing really hard to include the middle missing, missing middle uh, types of housing within all of our neighborhoods. So. Thank you. Any, um, any more comments from the majority microphone? Any more from the minority microphone? Uh, seeing none, then thank you very much. The debate has concluded. We will now proceed with the vote on the motion to substitute the minority recommendation for majority recommendation number three and related passages in the report. A simple majority vote decides this motion. Uh, we will do a precise count only if the vote is close enough that we, I cannot determine the result. So please raise your voting card if you favor the motion to substitute the minority recommendation for majority recommendation number three and related passages. Okay, put your cards down. Uh, and please raise your voting card if you oppose the motion to substitute. Okay, the motion carries. Uh, so we will now move on. Um, City Club of Portland has voted to substitute the minor minority recommendation for majority recommendation number three and related passages. We will now vote on whether to adopt the report as amended. Uh, the microphone to, again, to the far right is labeled what's still called majority, but we'll call that to adopt, and the one to the left, reject. Um, I will alternate between the two positions. Each member will have one minute to speak. Uh, we previously tossed a coin and will first recognize a member uh, supporting adoption of the report. Is there anyone to speak in favor of adopting the report? Seeing none, then we're going to go to the... Okay, yeah, but we'll give you a moment. <laughs> it's fine. Maybe I should just be like Charlie Davis and call the question. <laughs> uh, I'm Gil Johnson. I'm the cranky old white guy on this uh, uh, research committee. Um, I just want to point out one thing. This crisis affects every one of us. And uh, I've just been doing some, like, back of the envelope calculations here. There's an estimate that there's 150,000 people in Portland that are rent burdened. That means they're paying rents in excess of 30% of their income. Now, figure out if you're making $15 a year, that's about $30,000. Uh, $15 an hour, that makes about $30,000 a year. 30% of that's $900 a month. You can't rent a place for $900 a month anymore. So uh, what's happening is some people are going, getting, getting kicked out on the street. Other people are biting the bullet and paying the extra mon money, up to 40, 50, 60% of their income. That's affecting me as a small businessman who relies on people making discretionary purchases. I estimate when you add that 150,000 people rent burdened, and that's not everybody, there's other people affected at, at smaller levels by increased rents. That's about $300 million lost to the local economy. It's going to landlords and investment companies, many of them out of state. It's not going into the local economy. So think about that when you're taking, uh, casting your vote. Okay. And now a comment from the reject microphone. Ted Kay, City Club member. I. Uh, find convincing the arguments in the report and the recommendations to increase supply of housing, but the language about supporting rent control is deeply disturbing. I quote from the Concise Encyclopedia of Economics that says, economists are virtually unanimous in con concluding that rent controls are destructive. 93% uh, of U.S. economists agree with a proviso that a ceiling on rents 
reduces the quantity and quality of housing available. In other words, rent control creates the unintended consequence of reducing supply, and therefore I urge a no vote on this report. And a comment from the adopt microphone. Hello, my name is Krista Gardner, uh, both a City Club member and a member of this research committee. So while we were doing this research, we heard from many witnesses, over 20 expert witnesses, and we conducted uh, in-depth research. One of the prevailing feelings that came through in those interviews, as well as through the local research, was a dismal, um, dismal feeling that things could not improve, that we were destined to become a San Francisco or a New York or a Seattle, that we could not do anything to prevent the affordability crisis that is currently underway. I do not believe that is true. The Portland uh, metro area has been a leader in urban planning for 40 years. We can face this crisis the way we have faced crises before in economics and in land use, and we can do something, but we need to do it now. Portland is in the verge of converting itself from a small town or a small city, and I'm from here, I definitely know that this is a small town and a small city, to a larger metropolitan area. As we move from that smaller metropolitan area to a larger metropolitan area, we need to put in place policies to prevent us from becoming just another San Francisco and just another Seattle. Very good. Do we have another comment from the reject microphone? Yes, my name is Rod Merrick, City Club member. Um, I, I have very mixed feelings about this, and I'm sure that others have, there are elements of this that are very important that we should adopt. There are other elements that we should not adopt. And I'm particularly concerned um, and makes it very difficult to support the uh, minority, um, the minority, um, uh, adopted minority piece of this. And the reason is that it's, um, it's indiscriminate it's indiscriminate in the way that it is um, zo talking about zoning the city. So um, there's a great need for additional, uh, if you want to call it middle housing, there's a great need for additional density um, around the centers to, to build those centers and make them strong. But the problem is um, when you unleash, uh, quote, middle housing on all the neighborhoods indiscriminately, you end up with density where it doesn't belong, and um, you don't strengthen the centers that we want to strengthen. So this is the reason that I'm opposed to the, uh, to the report. I would love to support it. I think there's some very important elements in it that we all should support. But because it's so indiscriminate in its solutions, I'm unable to do so. Thank you. Another comment from the ADOPT side. Uh, my name is Margot Black, City Club member and member of the committee. Um, I'd like to um, respond to the concern about rent control and just remind the committee that the recommendation is for the state to lift the ban in order for Portland to be able to have the conversation, not to actually enact it necessarily, but to have it as a tool on the table. I want to remind you about Dr. Lisa Bates, who said there are a number of different ways that rent control can be um, implemented um, and that it has been implemented in various ways across many um, urban uh, cities in, uh, in the United States, but also in Canada and, and across Europe. Um, when we say that rent control doesn't work, it's very important for us to ask what we are defining as work and whether or not what we have now is working better. I think when we have five and $600 rent increases levied against senior citizens on fixed incomes, we have to agree that that is not acceptable and that if the preemption is lifted and we at least have that as a, as a possible tool, then that in and of itself may encourage more prudence by housing providers when they are deciding how much to, to, to raise those rents. Right now, there is, uh, there is nothing stopping them from doing that because they know that uh, local jurisdictions have no ability to constrain that in any possible way. 
And so I, I just want to remind you that the, the recommendation is, is simply to have it as a tool for conversation, that just that enough may, be, um, may provide some additional uh, sticks, if you will. Um, <laughs> And that um, when we ask about rent control working and what it even looks like, we need to, uh, we need to be um, very clear in, in those questions. It doesn't work if, uh, if we are talking about um, optimizing profits um, for housing providers. It works very well for tenants who want to stay in their homes and communities. Do we, do we have any more comments from the reject microphone? I see none, so another from the adopt microphone. Uh, Kurt Wavery, member. Um, I uh, think that we should vote for this because it brings to the public uh, um, a very critical problem. I wish the report were stronger and more specific, um, and I really thought carefully that maybe I would oppose it, but I think it's I would hate to see the headline tomorrow saying City Club opposes report on affordable housing. Um, so I'm going to vote for it. Uh, any, any more comments from the reject microphone? Uh, seeing none, then another from the adopt microphone. Ken Fairfax, City Club member and practicing economist for 30 years. I have heard some of the concerns of people, and I think I mentally boil them down to it is possible to put a cap on rents and call it rent control, and I would oppose that. That would be a very stupid policy. I support a really intelligent policy crafted to meet Portland's needs. This report doesn't go into that level of detail. I realize that. But like we've heard over and over, it says we should have a serious discussion. Same thing on inclusionary zoning. Yes, you can do it poorly and you can turn neighborhoods into apartment blocks, or you can do it well. Maybe what we need is to have another minority that says, and let's do another city club study on exactly what is the right rent control for Portland and what is the right inclusionary zoning. Because you're right, they can be done wrong, but I also believe they can be done right. I see no one else at either microphone. Uh, therefore, the debate has concluded. We will now vote on whether to adopt the report. Uh, a simple majority vote determines whether or not the club supports this report. The final tally will include uh, votes cast in person today and the votes cast online by noon next Wednesday, April 20. The results will be announced online on April 21st. If you wish to vote today, please indicate your vote on your voting card at this time and turn it in at the back of the room. Please make sure your name is printed on it, uh, and if you turn in your voting card before you leave, you will not receive an email ballot. Uh, thank you to Andrea, Mike, and the rest of the committee for their hard work. We are adjourned. <laughs>